Hey ladies, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here with a quick tutorial for you on conditioners. Before I get started, this is um, the end result of my wash and go that I did this morning and I'm loving it. I love my curls. I love everything about it, ladies. I'm loving it. Well, one of the things that I would like to say for those of you who don't know me and for those of you who do, you can just, you know, you don't have to listen to this bit. I want to share with you three things. One, I'm definitely a woman who's natural and have been natural for the last five years. Two, I am also a hairstylist, hairdresser, cosmetologist, and have been for just about 30 years. Just about 30 years. Okay, ladies, that's a long time. I also produced salon grade skincare and hair care products. Did research and development. And that's one of the things, ladies, that I am going to be sharing with you. I'm gonna be teaching you how to make salon grade. And I'm not talking about repurposing, like buying somebody's conditioner, you know, or, or, or shampoo and, you know, mixing up to make your own. I'm talking about making your own from scratch. And I'm here to tell you there is a huge difference. That being said, that being said, even for my clients, when I was making skincare, prestige skincare products, one of the things that I would do is there is always a line that I will use, that I will purchase and use. And I do that so that for my clients who don't wanna make their own stuff, I can say to them, you can use X, Y, Z, and I personally feel that it's good enough because I use it on, on moi. I use it on me. So anyway, that being said, we're gonna talk about conditioners, ladies, and I'm gonna try and keep it concise and to the point, because sometimes I can veer off. So for those of you who know me, you just bear with me or just fast forward, ladies. I, I, it won't hurt my feelings. Just, just kind of fast forward because, you know, I can yak, 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 yak. I love talking. I love talking. Right, so. Conditioners. What is a conditioner? And I've got my notes here, by the way. What is a conditioner? Well, a conditioner is a naturally occurring synthesized product that is made from natural ingredients or synthetic ingredients. And so what a conditioner does is assist and support us in creating a different environment, a different aesthetic environment in our hair. So Wendy, what does that mean? Basically, if your hair is dry, if it's dry, dull and brittle, a conditioner can help to temporarily rectify that problem. If your hair is hard to comb out, if it's fly away, a conditioner can help to temporarily rectify that problem. And so therefore we actually use conditioners so that they will allow us to have total manageability and control over our hair so we can style it in the way in which we want. And that bottom line is what a conditioner does for us. A conditioner, if it's good, also helps to, helps to balance out, or it should help to balance out our natural pH, the natural pH of our hair. And the natural pH of our hair and skin, depending on your biological makeup, where you are health-wise, etc., is anywhere between 4.5 and 5.5, okay? And making sure that your conditioner has enough acid in it will ensure that it will allow your cuticle to lay down and have your hair looking, your tresses looking shiny, okay? So that's something that I did wanna say and that's conditioners straight across the board. I don't care what they do, it's conditioners straight across the board. Well, there are three basic types of conditioners. And I don't care whether you spent 
$35 on a conditioner. Or as I've heard many of the ladies say, you know, you go to, you go to the dollar store or wherever and you can get two for one, 32 ounces, two for one, which personally I wouldn't touch with the barge pole, but that's me. Okay. But you could get two for one and do what you need to do. That being said, whether you pay a dollar for it or $35 for it, okay, conditioners do one of three things. They either rinse off, i.e. they give you the whole aesthetic thing where it smells good and it just gives you manageability. It's, it's a detangler or anti-static. Okay, you either leave it in where it allows for whatever you wanted it to do. If it was if it was to help correct dry hair, so it allows for emolliency. It allow, allows for emolliency and in some cases moisture to be left in the hair while you style it and do whatever it is that you need to do. Okay, that's number two. And number three. An intense conditioner that is designed to repair the hair, which usually has somebody's hydrolyzed protein in it, whether it's a uh, keratin, whether it's wheat, whether it's quinoa, I've been seeing that lately, quinoa, uh, that sort of stuff. It's a hydrolyzed protein, oats, um, cotton, actually cotton was really nice as a hydrolyzed protein. They don't, you don't really see it anymore, but cotton was really nice. It would really leave your hair soft. However, it's still a protein and it would still be used as an intense conditioner. And with all intense conditioners, there's a protocol that should be followed. And so those are your three basic conditioners. You have your rinse off, you have your leave on, and then you have your um, intensive treatment conditioners. So, okay, the other thing that I'm going to say is that I'm gonna talk about the primary functions of each, all right? And the other thing that I, I do want to say to you ladies is this, I'm going to, I'm going to put a challenge out there and I'm going to say to you that there are conditioners out there that have the same base ingredient that they use to make fabric softener. <laughs> yeah, downy and snuggles. I think it snuggles with that little funky bear or whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. There are some conditioners that are out there that are made with the same product and there's nothing wrong with that, but don't go using fabric softener in your hair. It's got a whole group of other stuff that shouldn't really be on your skin like that. But I just wanted you to know, this is how, um, Hey, the, the, the products, that's how products are made. And again, I'm going to show you how, I'm actually going to show you how to make a excellent conditioner, excellent conditioner with some of those base ingredients. So, okay, let me back up here and just talk for a hot second about a cream rinse. Now, a cream rinse is usually, it's not really thick. A cream rinse really isn't thick. I didn't bring one out here, I've made some, but cream rinse really isn't thick. It's one of those things that you can, um, you can use. If you shampooed your hair every day, you could put a cream rinse in it and not really worry about any buildup, okay? Its primary function is anti-static and manageability and really for the scent, primarily. That's what it does. And again, it's usually a thinner consistency than your, than any of your other conditioners. With a cream rinse, it really doesn't impart, it really doesn't impart any other properties or any other kind of functionality to your hair, okay? You then have your rinse off conditioner, okay? You have a rinse off conditioner that is in between the leave, the in between your cream rinse and I want to say your leave on. It really tends to be a lot thicker. It tends to be, no, back that up. Okay, ladies, I want to talk a little bit about the 
types of conditioners, i.e. your rinse off conditioner. Now your, your, your cream rinse, the primary function for your cream rinse is anti-static, detangling, manageability, and of course the fragrance, the scent, okay? That's what it brings. It really doesn't bring any, any other kind of corrective property, i.e. emolliency, i.e. moisture, um, you know, oils. It really doesn't bring anything else to the table other than being able to detangle, anti-static, stop, stop the, stop the frizz. And that's what it brings to the table. Okay. And it, it, it's the consistency of it is definitely different to your rinse off conditioner. Okay. So you have your rinse off conditioner and those are the ones that are usually thick. Okay. Rinse off conditioner. Okay. Rinse off conditioner. Okay. Nice and thick. All right. Nice and thick. And Ladies, you really shouldn't do this. I'm putting this back in the bottle. Waste not want that. Okay, so your rinse off conditioner, your rinse off conditioner is something by virtue of its name that needs to be rinsed off. Okay, you put it into your hair. You can leave it in your hair. Sometimes you need to leave it in for five, 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe longer, but it needs to be rinsed off. And ladies, let me just tell you this, right? Because my, my sister, let me, let me do back up to you. My sister, back in the day, and she'll tell you this. Back in the day, I'd say to her, hey sis, what you doing? Oh, I'm just getting ready to um, rinse my hair out. Oh, you just shampooed your hair. Um, no, I did it yesterday and I put conditioner in and I slept in it. I said, well, did the instructions tell you that you could leave it on like that? No. And I would, I kept, uh, Olivia, don't leave a conditioner in or on your hair truly longer than the prescribed time. If you think that the people in the industry are telling you that for your health, rest assured they're not. It's for their health so they don't get sued. Okay, ladies, while it might not do anything to your scalp, while it may not do anything to your scalp and hair, some of the actual products, some of the ingredients, when they cross that dermal, the transdermal barrier, when they cross the barrier and get into the system via the capillaries and, and, and into, the, into the, um, the blood system, the circulatory system, it can create problems where it may suppress your immune system. And if your immune system's suppressed, then what happens is it opens you up to be subject to any kind of disease and disorder that's out there. And this isn't sort of like an alarmist or a scare tactic. It happens to be a fact. It's a fact. So if, if, you, if it doesn't say to you to leave it, you can leave it in. And it tells you this needs to be rinsed thoroughly from your hair. Then it needs to be rinsed thoroughly from your hair. What you need is, if you need to leave something in your hair, you need a leave-in conditioner. But anyway, the rinse-off conditioner, as I showed you here, is nice, rich, thick, and creamy. And it will impart all the qualities of your cream rinse, you know, the anti-static, manageability, the scent, um, all of those functions. But it also has other ingredients in it that will actually help to um, get your hair to where you want it to be. It will have extracts, whether it be plant, botanical extracts that can do wonderful things for your hair. It will have oils. It will have butters. It will have vitamins, vitamin B. It will have these sort of things, vitamin C, in the product so that they can assist and support you in maintaining your hair, at least externally, um, and maintaining your hair healthily, okay? So your, um, your rinse off conditioner is your workhorse, okay? That's the real workhorse. And that's the thing that will really bring something to the table on a regular basis. Now your, your rinse off conditioner, 
much like your cream rinse, you can use daily, but because of the butters and because of the, the, the oils and even some of the extracts, you have to be careful that you don't experience a buildup, okay? You have to be careful that you don't experience a buildup. And again, ladies, I'm going to be teaching you all how to make your very, very own. It's so different and it's so easy. It's so easy. Now you have your intensive conditioner and your intensive conditioners are for all intent and purposes for those out there who understand this and who, who know this. They're all about the protein. They're all about the protein that can actually help work under the cuticle, trying to get towards the matrix of the hair, the middle of the hair, so that it can heal, so that it can um, strengthen the bonds and, uh, and everything that goes with it, but they're protein. Some of them work on the outside by creating a lattice work like aphogy. Uh, they create a, 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 a lattice work. It's almost like a resin, actually. A lattice work on the outside to strengthen the hair. But by and large, these should be used these should be used very sparingly, once a month, once every two months. Too much protein on your hair will dry your hair out. So that's why if you use something like Aphigy, you actually have to shampoo that out. And then you have to put something like your, um, your rinse off conditioner on it. You got to put your rinse off conditioner and you might even have to put in a leave in conditioner you might have to put in a leave-in conditioner. So you have these three, these three basic conditioners and note that I said three, your, 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 um, your rinse off conditioner, your rinse off conditioner and your cream rinse. I've kind of clumped those together, those two together because they, they have to be, they have to be rinsed off. They have to be. And then of course you have your leave-in. I don't, I don't recall if I, you have your leave-in. And I've just shown this. This is your leave-in conditioner. And one of the things that I said, ladies, um, earlier is that because I make my own product, one of the things I do for people who aren't interested, I actually find a line that I like and that's the line that I suggest, okay? And I happen to really like Giovanni. I know they've gone through changes, like they changed their formula, but it is what it is. It still does for me what it needs to do. And they, their product turnover for me is good. There are some products that are out there and I'm look, I look, wow, that was made in 2011 and it's good to 2017. Ah, something's wrong with that, 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 ow. That's some, something's wrong with that. They got some serious, serious diehard preservatives. Now I'm a preservative girl, but the preservatives I use, their shelf life will give you about a year, if that. OK, I'm not into this die hard stuff. But again, uh, Giovanni, I like the product line. I know people have started out liking it and then they were hating on the product. I heard all of that, but I like their line and it does what I want it to do. So um, you have your your um, leaving conditioner and this is something that you definitely can do. You can leave. You can leave the conditioner in. You don't need a lot because you don't want it to weigh down your hair, but it is safe to leave in your hair. And some of them, they might, you might see the same ingredients, the same basic raw ingredients, but the name of the game is how much you use to make it. The ratio of water to basic raw material. And that's the difference between whether or not some of them can be left in or not. So that being said, that being said, ladies, those are the conditioners. And of course, um, I have here, um, uh, Nutrifix or Nutrifix from, um, Giovanni. Again, that's their, that's their hair repair, their deep hair repair for damaged hair. Um, you know, and again, you, you can, you can see how much I use of this. I, I, I don't. That being said, I do need a line for people who are not interested in making their products because this is where I'm going, ladies. I want to teach you how to make your own. There's nothing like making your own product. But that's it, ladies. The, the, it's conditioners. We need them. 
Use them, be wise. The other thing I'd just like to point out is this. Many people will talk about, um, you know, their conditioner being moisturizing. There's a difference between moisturizing and emolliency, okay? The industry tends to clump them together. However, it behooves you to understand that something like Humectus, Humectus, sorry, Humectus from Nexus, that is a humectant. And what a humectant does is, yeah, it, it, it will definitely bring moisture because it pulls moisture from the atmosphere. And your hair, my hair, everybody's hair, especially the curlier it is, it, it's hydroscopic, which means it will draw moisture. It draws water, okay? It draws water. And so it's important to know what you want for your hair. Do you want a moisturizer, i.e. a humectant, or do you want an emollient? shea butter to make it soft what is it that you're wanting what is it that you're wanting you know um glycerin or glycerine glycerin is a humectant do you want that or do you want a moisturizer what is it that you want for your hair so knowing these things can help you because you know if you if you, uh, you might find that the products that you use in winter work really well, but if you live somewhere where it's humid and here comes summer, you don't understand you're using the same products and you know, it starts out all right, but by the end of the day, your hair's growing like cheer and you don't know why, because you might need a humectant in summer, something that's gonna draw moisture or water from, from the atmosphere. But in the summer, all you need is an emollient. All you need is emolliency. The butters, the oils, that sort of thing. You don't want to draw anything from the atmosphere. There's enough going on as there, as there is. The other thing that I would say, ladies, is that this journey, our natural hair journey, is an individual journey. Okay, ladies? Be under, it, 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 it's, it's a personal journey. As you saw earlier, um, when I had done my, my wash and go, this area here, it requires more water so I can get it to do what it needs to do. But I had to experience that. I had to, to find that out through cross, cross, you know, trials and tribulations and ah, I hate this. Or as I'm always apt to do when my hair starts not doing what I want it to do, I'm like, do, do, I get them clippers out, baby. I, I, I will, I will hair for the last I don't know how many years 20 30 I've been married what nearly 30 years I, I've worn short hair and this this <laughs> so um I had to learn that this area requires a little bit more water and I'm going to talk about water in another episode so you understand water is not about moisturizing water doesn't bring moisturizing moisture in that in that form it's not a moisturizer you know, it's a universal solvent. So anyway, that being, that being said, ladies, I just wanted to throw that in there so that you do understand the difference between an emollient and a moisturizer. And this is something that we're gonna talk about. But I hope this has been helpful. Play with your conditioners. I'll put the challenge out there. Look to see how many conditioners you can find that have the same ingredient as Snuggles or Downy or whatever else they've got out there that's a fabric softener. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Until next time, thanks for listening. Peace.